economic queen believes that this generation will have a first world Philippines. The likelihood of the Philippines joining the ranks of first world countries may no longer be a dream but may become a reality within this generation. Former President and House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo said she hopes the country would become an advanced economy just like its status during the term of her late father, President Diosdado Macapagal. At that time Philippines was the second richest Asian nation after Japan. Arroyo, who is running for another term as Congresswoman of Pampanga, recalled that under her administration as president, the country experienced 38 quarters of economic growth. The Philippines was only among the handful countries that survived the global financial crisis which was due to the strong finances it had during her term as chief executive. At that time two-thirds of the world went into a recession, but not the Philippines, she said. It will be recalled that Arroyo made economic development the centerpiece of her administration from 2001 to 2010. She expressed hope that the country would become an advanced economy or first world country within this generation. First world refers to high-income and industrialized nations such as the United States, Japan, and Germany. The Philippines is currently ranked as a middle-income economy, but the National Economic and Development Authority predicts that, that the country would attain the upper middle-income status by 2022. Upper middle-income countries have gross national income, GNI, per capita of more than $4,000. The next step is advanced or first world countries, those with GNI per capita income of $12,700 or more. Arroyo said she would like to see the Philippines become a first world country in her lifetime, replicating the feat of her father, the late President Diosdado Macapagal, whose term saw the Philippines become the second richest Asian nation after Japan. An economist by profession who studied at Georgetown University in the United States and obtained PhD in economics from the University of the Philippines, Arroyo introduced various economic reforms that led to strong government finances, low inflation, and steady economic growth that averaged 4.5% annually, one of the fastest in Southeast Asia. She introduced fiscal reforms, such as the expanded value added tax law, which boosted government revenues and ensured fiscal stability for the next administrations. This also laid the foundation for the Philippines to obtain investment grade rating from the major credit rating agencies. Fitch Ratings, one of the major credit rating agencies, acknowledged that the improvements in fiscal management begun under President Arroyo have made general government debt dynamics more resilient to shocks. Arroyo believes that the development of a new megalopolis, aside from Metro Manila, will help the Philippines attain faster growth in the next decades. She is pushing for several infrastructure projects to support the rise of Pampanga Golden Triangle as the next megalopolis in Luzon. She earlier tapped renowned urban planner Felino Palafox Jr. to draft the Pampanga development that would involve building new roads, mass transit systems and regional transport networks. The former president envisions Pampanga to be a well-connected province to attract more investments and economic activities, for industries to be able to thrive and new economic opportunities and investments to materialize, transportation access is one of the major considerations and factors for development, she said. When completed, Pampanga Megalopolis will become a jewel in Southeast Asia, Arroyo said. Economic Queen believes that this generation will have a first world Philippines. The first world refers to high income and industrialized nations such as the United States, Japan, and Germany. The Philippines is currently ranked as a middle income economy but the National Economic and Development Authority predicts that the country would attain the upper-middle-income status by 2022. Upper-middle-income countries have gross national income, GNI, per capita of more than $4,000. The next step is advanced or first-world countries, those with GNI per capita income of $12,700 or more. The 38 quarters of economic growth under the Arroyo administration from 2001 to 2010 lifted the country's per capita income. The Philippines also survived the global financial crisis with stronger finances during her term. At that time two-thirds of the world went into a recession, but not the Philippines, the former president said. Arroyo said she would like to see the Philippines become a first world country in her lifetime, replicating the feat of her father, the late President Diosdado Macapagal, whose term saw the Philippines become the second richest Asian nation after Japan. An economist by profession who studied at Georgetown University in the United States and obtained a Ph. D. In economics from the University of the Philippines, Arroyo introduced various economic reforms that led to strong government finances, low inflation, and steady economic growth that averaged 4.5% annually, one of the fastest in Southeast Asia. She introduced fiscal reforms, such as the expanded value-added tax law, which boosted government revenues and ensured fiscal stability for the next administrations. This also laid the foundation for the Philippines to obtain an investment-grade rating from the major credit rating agencies, Fitch Ratings, 
one of the major credit rating agencies acknowledged that the improvements in fiscal management begun under President Arroyo have made general government debt dynamics more resilient to shocks. Arroyo, who seeks to return to Congress representing the 2nd District of Pampanga Province, believes that the development of a new megalopolis, aside from Metro Manila, will help the Philippines attain faster growth in the next decades. She is pushing for several infrastructure projects to support the rise of the Pampanga Golden Triangle as the next megalopolis in Luzon. She earlier tapped renowned urban planner Felino Palafox Jr. to draft the Pampanga development that would involve building new roads, mass transit systems and regional transport networks. The former president envisions Pampanga to be a well-connected province to attract more investments and economic activities, for industries to be able to thrive and new economic opportunities and investments to materialize. Transportation access is one of the major considerations and factors for development, she said. The road ahead of us may be steep, but this pandemic only made us realize that no obstacles can stop us with our collective effort and shared mission, he said. The DTI earlier this year said it aims to boost the contribution of the e-commerce industry to P1.2 trillion by 2022, which is equivalent to 5.5% of the country's GDP. Manila, Philippines, economic recovery for Southeast Asia is expected to be more pronounced next year, as the region learns to live with COVID, with the Philippines expected to post the strongest rebound. In its weekly economic preview, market intelligence firm IHS Market said the economic scenario for 2022 continues to be positive for ASEAN as the region benefits from the global rebound from the pandemic. Most countries in the region this year suffered from COVID case surges due to the Delta variant, leading to renewed large-scale mobility curbs, which disrupted business activities and further delayed rebounds in consumption. While the ASEAN's economic rebound in 2021 has been significantly dampened by new waves of COVID Delta variant, the outlook is for gradually improving economic conditions in 2022, IHS Market Asia Pacific Chief Economist Rajiv Biswas said. GDP, gross domestic product, growth momentum is expected to improve in 2022, as vaccination programs reach a much higher share of the total population of the more populous Southeast Asian nations, allowing a gradual return to more normal domestic economic conditions, he said. IHS market expects positive growth across all ASEAN economies in 2022 largely due to base effects over the past two years. The Philippines is seen posting the strongest growth at around 7.2%. The growth figure is within the government's 7-9% to target for 2022. Philippine economic growth for this year is eyed at 4-5%, but local and international economists and financial institutions are already expecting a lower figure due to the recent lockdown. The Philippines will be followed by Vietnam at around 6.2%, Brunei at 5.8% and Cambodia at 5.6%. Myanmar is seen posting the slowest growth at less than 1% amid ongoing political tensions in the country. Despite next year's high growth, IHS market noted that many Southeast Asian nations still face considerable challenges. Some nations still have relatively low second-dose vaccination rates, problems with accessing vaccine supplies and also the very large size of the population in many nations, notably in Indonesia, the Philippines and Vietnam, Biswas said. In the region, Singapore and Malaysia have the highest vaccination rates. Cambodia and Brunei have also recorded high first-dose vaccination rates, while economic growth momentum is seen improving next year. Biswas emphasized that